Hello everyone. Welcome to another IR capsule for Shankar IAS Academy. Today, our topic is the recent visit to France by the Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi. The timing came as a bit of a surprise to many people because he had just returned from the United States. And it was the time when the moon uh, capsule was being launched. So for the Prime Minister to be away at that particular time, and soon after another visit to the United States surprised many people. But the fact is that this perhaps must have been scheduled earlier. And uh, not only that, uh, the visit to France was in a way a continuation of what happened in Washington during Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit. Our relations with France is very special in many ways. Because among the Western countries, among the European countries, France has kept India close because of very common, very many common principles and ideals that both the countries hold. When President Mac Macron was elected president, Mr. Modi made a very conscious effort to cultivate him because he was a new leader with a lot of promise. He was almost like Shinzo Abe for Mr. Modi because like Shinzo Abe, Mr. Macron, had a special relationship with India. Not only that, France has been close to us in many ways. Even though not advertised, but there were many things in which India and France cooperated. For example, France is the only country with which we have exchange of um, troops during the celebrations of, uh, of, of uh, national days. Like, for example, the French have visited India and also the Indian soldiers participated even this year during the Bastille Day. And also the Prime Minister was the chief guest as the National Day, that is Bastille Day. And France does not invite foreign heads of state every time, every year. We invite someone or the other, which is a country which is important to us at that particular time, uh, every year to India, and it's a signal of the growing relationship with these countries. But in the case of France, they do not invite a foreign guest every year. They choose years in which they select somebody or the other to come. So the invitation extended to our Prime Minister as the chief guest on Bastille Day was significant because it is symbolically important and that is probably the reason why the Prime Minister went even at the moon shot was taking place in India. Uh, the indications that we received from the Prime Minister's visit to the United States was that a new chapter is being opened in our relations with the United States and generally the Western countries. France is not entirely dependent on the United States on its foreign policy. They maintain a certain amount of distance, even though it's a NATO country, it's a European Union, in many ways linked with the United States. But they have always pursued a fairly independent foreign policy. There are also linkages with the European Union, the European Parliament. So in many ways, France's policies are linked with all these um, connections they have in Europe and with the United States. Still. There are several instances where France has shown a particular uh, affection to India. In fact, Jacques Chirac, who was the president of, the, of France, who signed the uh, cooperation, uh, the strategic partnership agreement 25 years ago. So this was the 25th anniversary of the strategic partnership and that was also significant. So it was the anniversary of the strategic friendship, the strategic partnership. It was the Bastille Day, which is a national day for uh, Europe. And we have opened a new kind of relationship with the West, with Prime Minister Modi's visit to the United States. So all these uh, indicate uh, that France is a country which is developing good relations with us, 
and we are confident that our strategic partnership will be beneficial. During the visit, of course, uh, we know that uh, the emphasis was, apart from symbolic and ceremonial things, um, the emphasis was on uh, defense supplies. You, you are aware that we uh, purchased Rafale aircraft as against F-8, F-17 or F-18 from the United States some time ago. At that time, the United States was a bit displeased that we bought uh, Rafale rather than uh, American aircraft. Of course, the reason was well known that the American aircraft was already in the possession of Pakistan. And therefore, we needed to have a diversified uh, military arrangement. And therefore, we decided to buy Rafale. Uh, there were, of course, uh, uh, questions about its uh, appropriateness and uh, kind of deal, which was uh, prices paid, etc., etc. But eventually, even the Supreme Court approved that the uh, deal was about vote. And uh, when the when the Chinese, uh, you know, infiltrated into into Ladakh, the we requested for a faster delivery of the. Uh, Rafale aircraft, right? the battle aircraft, and uh, the French speeded up uh, the supply. And now, apparently, we are buying 26 more, and uh, the discussions were finalized on that. And not only that, uh, uh, manufacture, joint manufacture of helicopters in India has been uh, agreed upon, and also possibility of French collaboration in manufacturing certain weapons in India, according to Make in India policy for use abroad. So basically, the visit, apart from its political significance, uh, it had a military significance, and uh, our cooperation with France has been enhanced on the 25th anniversary of our anniversary of our strategic partnership. And it's important to remember that it was in 1998, early 1998, that this partnership was signed by President Chirac when he came to India. Uh, but soon after, as you all know, in May, we had a nuclear test, the second nuclear test of 1998. And uh, this caused consternation in the whole world, and there was very strong reaction from the United States and Western countries in general. So we went into a difficult time with all these countries because they not only condemned the uh, tests because we are not uh, signatories to the NPT, uh, they saw it as a, as a challenge to the NPT regime that the United States and Western European countries attach great importance to. So, but, it was only France that did not join. Of course, France condemned the test in the sense that as a P5, as nuclear weapon states, they were strongly reacting, and France was part of it. Uh, but uh, the French president at that time insisted that uh, he will not impose any sanctions against India. So France was the first only country in the, in the Western Alliance which did not impose sanctions. This is also because we have had uh, cooperation with France um, in uh, nuclear matters, uh, in peaceful use of nuclear matters, nuclear uh, energy, uh, because they were confident that we would not uh, enter into a manufacturing of nuclear weapons. And um, so when even when the decision was taken and we uh, you know, tested our nuclear weapons, the French reaction was uh, quite modest. They did not uh, join with the rest of the Western Alliance to condemn India or to um, uh, cancel the strategic uh, partnership. We were maintained with that. And uh, things continued, and India was uh, in great cooperation. And after President Macron came to into power, uh, Mr. Modi developed a very good relationship with him. And it was the con context in which uh, the visit took place. Uh, there are some basic elements in the foreign policies of France and uh, India. Uh, like India, 
France believes in strategic autonomy. They do not consider to be themselves to be an extension of the United States. They do consider India to be uh, independent in its foreign policy. And, uh, and France also has the same attitude. Um, then uh, the, the, bo both the countries have a very close economic relationship, though the trade is not very high. And that is because of the linkages with the uh, uh, European Union and um, the policies that generally adopted as the European Union as a whole. And there is no uh, free trade agreement with the European Union yet. And therefore, there are some difficulties in trade. But within the available uh, situation, uh, France has been cooperating with us economically also. And France, like India, believes in non-interference in internal affairs of states. And uh, whatever they need to do or they do in terms of human rights situation or, um, uh, or uh, you know, or lack of uh, press freedom, etc. They do reflect some of the ideas reflected by the Western countries in general, but they are much more uh, moderate in this respect. And um, of course, as it happened, uh, the, just after the Prime Minister's visit, there was a um, resolution in the European Parliament about uh, the violence in Manipur, which came as a surprise, but again, it was not France, it was the European Parliament. And there was nothing they could do, but uh, they showed some understanding of the situation, just as uh, they always do, because uh, they believe that they should not be unnecessarily inter interfering in uh, internal affairs of states. So like uh, India, geopolitics without value judgments, and no uh, natural or uh, permanent alignment with Western ideas, as far as India is concerned, are what some of the factors that determine uh, India and French uh, relations. So, and also New Delhi and uh, Paris have a tradition of uh, exchanging, as I mentioned, uh, troops during national days. days. Um, we have a uh, had cooperation with uh, France and nuclear energy, space, and uh, also supply of uh, defense equipment. Uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh was uh, another prime minister who was, was a chief guest at Bastille Day some years earlier. And the purchase of uh, equipment, defense equipment, and uh, the, there have been many agreements that have moved forward. Uh, and uh, because of the two countries following uh, the strategic autonomy. Uh, then uh, the in space, nuclear energy and defense cooperation, uh, we have been ahead of other countries. And um, after the, uh, the waiver of the nuclear suppliers group of, towards India, not to have supplies, France was one of the first countries to agree to set up two nuclear reactors in India. This is not uh, really materialized. There are several reasons for it. One of the reasons mentioned is the cost uh, factor, because the prices of establishing nuclear reactors in India had risen, and France had not provided for that kind of funding and trouble. Probably this is still under discussion. Uh, secondly, our own uh, nuclear liability law, uh, which prohibited American uh, reactors to come to India, applied in the case of France also. And so the two nuclear reactors have not been set up, but there is a principle, an agreement principle that the two countries will set up this uh, joint uh, nuclear reactors in, in India. There was also the factor that um, several uh, public demonstrations were held against these uh, reactors. And there was criticism that these reactors were not fully tested 
and uh, therefore some more work had to be done. So these are all some complicated issues that have arisen. Uh, but there is in principle agreement that uh, France will set up two nuclear reactors in India, which will add to our uh, capacity to produce electricity. Uh, as you know now, in spite of the nuclear deal, it's only the Russian reactors operate in India. No other foreign reactors have been set up, though United States and France had agreed to it. So the, the, what happened in the European Parliament uh, was, uh, of course, uh, objectionable to us. It was an interference in internal affairs, and, uh, but France kept a little distance from it and they considered it as a routine responsibility for them to monitor human rights in a democratic uh, country. Uh, near, near the time, uh, there have been several exchanges between us and France on the Ukraine war. Uh, President Macron had made several efforts uh, to find a solution. And uh, he, he visited uh, Russia and he had several conversations with President Putin. Though no, no progress was made to end the war, uh, his efforts are continuing. And uh, in this particular case, there is also a possibility of India and uh, uh, France working together to end the war in Ukraine. Of course, these uh, details are not known, but because India and France have similar uh, considerations in having a good relationship with Russia, and also the fact that all of us want peace and development in Ukraine. So, uh, the effort is being made by President Macron, and perhaps uh, there could be some kind of collaboration between him and the Prime Minister Modi. That could be another reason for uh, uh, the visit, and uh, some discussions may not have uh, may have taken place. Um, and France was the first uh, to sign a, a nuclear agreement with India. And um, they have taken a view which is balanced because of India's diversity and uh, democratic credentials and so on. These are some of the main elements. And uh, India abstained on a French revolution resolution in the, uh, they had, uh, France had uh, introduced a resolution in the General Assembly, uh, seeking uh, collaboration among countries in order to give humanitarian assistance uh, to, to Ukraine. And uh, this, they were a bit disappointed that since was, this was humanitarian assistance, uh, India still uh, abstained on it. And uh, even that was, of course, accepted as a um, kind of a legitimate position of India, which would be helpful in the by remaining uh, neutral in a sense, this position may help in the future. Now, Mr. President Macron is willing to go to South Africa to attend BRICS, but of course, now we hear that uh, President Putin is uh, not going there. Uh, Macron made a visit to China, and uh, there was no uh, concern for us because the French relationship with China is quite benign and it is helpful to us in, in some ways. Um, in fact, the proposal being made by uh, Western countries that India should be attracted more to NATO is not something that uh, uh, France uh, supports. India and France had a, a roadmap which does not include relationship with NATO or Quad plus coalition, etc., does not uh, seem to attract uh, France. So we have uh, some joint patrols in the in the Pacific because there are French territories in the Pacific which would be of uh, help to India in keeping the peace in the Indo-Pacific region. So, in other words, a relationship with France is uh, different from our relationship with the U.S. because there are 
more uh, sympathy, sentimental linkages between India and France. And it has continued at a fairly uh, strong basis. There have not been aberrations because the US India relations, we always say it is, uh, it is like a roller coaster ride. Uh, but France, in the last 25 years at least, has remained uh, friendly to India and helpful in many ways, defense, uh, technology, and also understanding the human rights situation in India. So for all these reasons, the visit to uh, Prime Minister Modi to France was very significant and very purposeful. And it supported the US visit because the, our acceptance of, uh, of you know, defense products, etc., from United States and Europe in general is a new beginning without our joining NATO or becoming an ally. And France respects our position more than all others because they are not trying to push us into any other direction. They are quite happy with what India is and they understand the potential for India. And in a sense, France has remained a kind of non-aligned in the world. So if perhaps there was going to be a big um, a conflict between India, sorry, China and uh, the United States, so France might take a very, very moderate line. And, uh, and that is that we can see by President Macron's visit to China. So in many words, our relationship with France is complementary and is are likely to remain so in the near future. And that is the um, importance of President Modi, Prime Minister Modi's visit to France at this time. Thank you. Well, I don't know whether that's a factor. There are many factors when you decide on buying a particular uh, weapon or an aircraft, fighter aircraft from other countries. In the case of France, what happened was really that um, F-17, F-18, the American jets were already purchased by Pakistan. So though we may not have had any difficulty with American jets, uh, the important factor was that we had to have something which is not uh, known or used in, by Pakistan. Because after all, we are likely to use these deaths against Pakistan and therefore it was important for us to have a diversity. And uh, French aircraft, that is the Rafale aircraft, is considered one of the best in the world. Of course, NATO is willing to admit India. There have been many suggestions that India should join NATO or at least become part of NATO in some particular way. But this has been completely uh, rejected by, well, not rejected in the sense that we have expressed our opinion clearly about this, that uh, NATO is not in the DNA of India. India's DNA is non-alignment and that is non-negotiable, is our present position. Uh, but uh, the recent visit of the Prime Minister, uh, Prime Minister to uh, his United States showed a little difference because for the first time, the United States offered us uh, weapons which they do not normally give to non-NATO countries. Of course, they have a system by which they consider some countries as non-NATO alliance country, allied countries. But that we have not accepted. We are simply suggesting that uh, whatever they can offer without our being an ally, we would be welcome to receive. And that itself is a, is a change in policy. So what the United States offered was very, uh, very interesting and very new. And our acceptance of it was also new. So this is yet to be seen how it works. But there is no certainly no intention for us to join NATO. Well, France is, st stands in the middle in this particular debate. I don't know specifically about carbon tax, uh, but um, many uh, European countries were quite positive to the Kyoto Protocol 2007. They, would have, they, were just, they signed it 
and uh, they were willing to follow the logic of 1992, the Rio agreements. But as you know, it is uh, the Western countries, particularly the so-called juice cans, that is Japan, United States, Canada, Canada, and New Zealand. These were the hardliners on that issue. And later, of course, we changed, moved away from Kyoto Protocol and went for Paris and went for all this, you know. So France will be a moderating influence in this, uh, you know, difference of opinion between uh, developed countries and developing countries on climate change. But now we are pursuing a slightly different path, trying to, uh, uh, you know, fix net carbon years. You know, we are committed to having net zero carbon in 2017. Other countries have fixed our other years. We don't know that it will work out. But the general feeling that it will not, and the only way climate change we can, can be controlled is through a, a scientific breakthrough by which we are able to capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and uh, bring it and bury it somewhere or convert it into some products, consumer products. And such research is going on. But uh, people reducing emissions, sacrificing the economic development in the developing countries case and not sacrificing their comforts as in the case of developed countries. And that conflict will continue. And therefore, the best way would be somebody to develop technology, which I believe is being developed, to capture carbon from the atmosphere and you know, um, bury it somewhere. And that possibility is being discussed. But uh, support for developing countries, giving them money, reducing their own carbon emissions, etc., have not worked so far. Okay, and thank you very much.